The International News Net World Report is a national television news show available in more than 30 million homes. We broadcast daily real news the networks won't tell you. We are solely viewer supported. That means you. You can donate at our website, innworldreport.net. We hope you find the following interview informative and helpful. In China, robbing the government gives you the death sentence. Here, it's business as usual. Get caught manipulating an election, you might move up the party when you get out of jail, that is. In Washington, D.C., the culture of corruption flourishes. Let no investigation damper the spirit of this administration and its allies being above the law, since they are the law. Yesterday, Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, crew released its third annual report on the most corrupt members of Congress entitled Beyond Delay the 22 most corrupt members of Congress. And there are also a watch list, which they have their eye on. This encyclopedic report documents unethical and possibly illegal activities of only the most tainted members of Congress. Crew has compiled the members' transgressions and analyzed them in, the, in light of federal laws and congressional rules. Crew also has relaunched the report's tandem website, beyonddelay.org. To tell us more, we are joined on the phone by Cruise Executive Director Melanie Sloan. Welcome to INN, Melanie. Thanks for having me. This is an amazing report. What are the most egregious assaults on the people of the United States that you found? Well, there, there are so many. I mean, 11 of these members of Congress are under federal investigation, so, so that's pretty serious. I mean, I would say that one of the members who seems to be in the most trouble right now is Senator Ted Stevens from Alaska. He had his house uh, raided by the FBI in July in in connection with a bribery or improper gift investigation. But he is hardly alone. Uh, John Murtha, a Democrat member from uh, Pennsylvania, is uh, the king of pork, really. He is the one who has uh, given away the most earmarks, and I shouldn't say given away, he's really sold them for campaign contributions. And so that's our tax dollars going to earmarks for those who contribute uh, generously to Congressman Murtha. You mentioned uh, Stevens of Alaska the entire Alaska delegation, I guess you'd have to say, is also under investigation. Can you tell us a little more about their offenses? Sure. Well, they're a small delegation, only being three of them, but uh, Representative Don Young from Alaska is under federal investigation in uh, connection with several different matters. The Jack Abramoff investigation, The uh, there's another uh, federal investigation involving a Wisconsin trucking magnate named Dennis Troja, and there's an investigation involving um, a Florida construction company called PBS and J that uh, Don Young is also involved in, and he too is involved in the VICO investigation, which is the thing that is, uh, which is an Alaskan oil field, uh, oil field engineering company that is the cause of all of Ted Stevens' problems. So Young has a lot of problems on the horizon. Uh, Lisa Murkowski, the other senator from Alaska, uh, had an ethics complaint filed against her by a, another nonprofit organization. Uh, she uh, accepted an improper gift of land uh, when she bought some land from an Alaskan real estate developer at a vastly reduced price, much lower than the land's actual value. She also then got a mortgage for the property uh, at a rate not generally available to the general public. Both of those things violate the Senate gift rule. Once uh, caught for these things, uh, Lisa Murkowski gave the land back to the real estate developer. But that's not really how it works. You don't get to say, once you're caught, oops, uh, never mind, uh, no harm, no foul, I, I won't do that anymore. You're not supposed to violate the rules in the first place. You mentioned not only Stevens from Alaska, but you, uh, you also mentioned Mr. Anti-War, John Murtha. Uh, however, when looking at your list, uh, and the members of Congress include 14 Republicans and four Democrats. When you talk about the Senate, that was the House of Representatives, when you talk about the Senate, all of them are members of the Republican Party. There seems to be an uneven, uneven distribution. What's your take on that? Well, the Republicans have been the ones who've been in power for the last 10 years. Democrats only uh, came into power again uh, back in November. And really, the fact of the matter is that it's power that corrupts. And you have to have power to abuse it. The Democrats didn't have any. You have to remember that the Democrats lost control of the House of Representatives back in 1994, largely because of corruption issues. There was the post office scandal, the banking scandal, 
and Dan Rostenkowski, the former chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, who eventually went to jail. So Democrats aren't immune from this kind of bad behavior, but they haven't been in power. They haven't had the opportunity. We'll see what happens now that they're back in. If you were to weigh the kind of uh, offenses the Democrats uh, pulled in the past and the kind that the Republicans are now, how would you balance between those two? Who would you say uh, is the winner of corruption? Well, you know, the, the Democrats started uh, everybody down this path, being in control of Congress for over 40 years. Uh, they, they were definitely selling their power to the highest bidder, but the Republicans took it to a whole new art, particularly under Tom DeLay, the former majority leader, uh, who was very explicit that Congress was for sale. Uh, and I think it's because of the example set by delay that so many Republicans have gotten into so much trouble. And now we are seeing a large number of Republican members of Congress under federal investigation by a Republican Department of Justice. So despite the fact that uh, Republicans like to claim the culture of corruption is, you know, it's evenly split, it's, it's not true. Well, the Democrats ran on a platform of eradicating the culture of corruption, but just today, uh, in the trial of Brent Wilkes, uh, of course, going back to the Randy Duke Cunningham scandal, the, uh, the kickbacks to the defense contractor Wilkes, uh, we know that Congress is trying to block those subpoenas. Is this, uh, is this a bipartisan effort in your best understanding? It is a bipartisan effort. There have been more Republicans who were subpoenaed in that case than Democrats, but at least a couple of Democrats, including John Murtha and also Ike Skelton, the chairman of the Armed Services Committee, uh, all of the members of Congress are uh, moving to quash those subpoenas, saying that they shouldn't have to testify. Frankly, some of those members are likely to have to testify in, uh, in Mr. Wilkes' case. Mr. Wilkes was well known to the Armed Services, um, Armed Services Committee and the uh, Defense Appropriations Subcommittee. He worked with those people regularly. He uh, had parties for them. He gave them a lot of money. Uh, and in return, they earmarked for him. So some of those members may well have relevant evidence to his defense trial. Is this that much different, Congress trying to protect itself from the William Jefferson case that uh, surfaced last year? Well, I, I mean, William Jefferson is, uh, is clearly a crook who's going to go to jail. It's just a matter of time. His trial will be uh, in February. And uh, I, I think we are seeing members of Congress saying that you know, different rules should apply to them. And Mr. Jefferson said that his office shouldn't be subject to search by uh, FBI investigators, despite the fact that there was a suggestion he was hiding evidence of his crimes in his congressional office and had refused to comply with subpoenas. And now we have uh, members of Congress who are not going to want to comply with subpoenas in the Brent Wilkes case. Uh, and some of them may want to not comply because they may be concerned about their own criminal issues. I mean, people like Jerry Lewis and Duncan Hunter uh, and John Doolittle from California are all under federal investigation. Uh, and some of those people are, and they're involved in the Duke Cunningham case, and that's where Brent Wilkes, uh, how he found himself indicted. You say at the end of the article, quote, thankfully the Department of Justice does not share Congress's willingful myopia to corruption. Uh, you were being facetious here, weren't you? No, uh, I wasn't being uh, facetious. The House of Representatives particularly, um, but the Senate to a, a lesser extent, the House and Senate Ethics Committees have refused to take corruption seriously. They simply do not want to sit in judgment of their colleagues, and they have let corruption run rampant without ever stepping in. There's a lot of conduct that may not be criminal, but it's certainly unethical, and we never see the Ethics Committees step in and take a stand and say, you know, you can't do that. But thankfully, uh, once it does rise to the level of criminal behavior, the Department of Justice is stepping in and investigating and, in some cases, prosecuting members of Congress who violate the law. But, Melanie, in the ongoing U.S. attorney scandal, we are seeing that the Department of Justice did act in a partisan way, not only in the firings, but in selective prosecutions, which helped the GOP in some of the elections. I think the department had a lot of problems under Attorney General Gonzalez, who thankfully is gone. So I think there are a lot of uh, terrific prosecutors at the department, including many of the U.S. attorneys who were fired, uh, who were fired because they refused to bow down to political pressure uh, and uh, let politics uh, uh, play a role in their prosecutions. Melanie Sloan, anything else you'd like to add before we have to go? And let me ask, what do you believe the solution is uh, within Congress, since it, uh, it seems to be changing parties or changing hands, but it doesn't seem to be going away? Well, I think that Congress would have to take corruption more seriously, and there would have to be real enforcement of the ethics rules. And sadly, uh, the House particularly doesn't seem to be inclined to do that. Uh, they, there's been a bipartisan ethics task force that's been supposed to come back with recommendations ever since uh, the beginning of May, uh, and they are several months late now without coming back with anything, and they, they need a new plan for enforcement of ethics rules. 
Melanie Sloan, thank you for joining us in the International News Net. Thanks for having me.